Let's translate John 3, verse 18. O pistevon isavton u krinate. O de mi pistevon ide kekrite. O ti mi pepistevken isto onomatu onoganus wiu tu theu. The one who believes in him, that is Jesus, is not condemned, but the one who does not believe has already been condemned because he did not believe in the name of the only Son of God. Here we have our diagramming. We've got a substantive participle here, okay? So participle being verbal adjective and as an adjective preceded by the definite article, we're going to translate this substantively. That is the one who does the action, the one who believes, pistevo. Now often, but not exclusively, uh, pistevo is followed by is, and is marks the object of pistevo. The one who believes in him. So the object of this belief is Jesus. The one who believes in him will not or is not condemned. This is crino, okay? So we negate it with u. This is indicative. This is present passive indicative. So the one who believes is not condemned, but specifically the one who believes in him, okay, is not condemned, present passive indicative. Then we have a contrasting marker. Now we have O, me, oops, wrong one, Pistevon. So you can see the parallel, uh, the parallelism here. The one who believes in him versus the one who does not. Then we have our adverb. And now we have kekrite. Now kekrite is third singular perfect passive indicative. Or it's middle passive, but we're going to translate it passively. But the one who does not believe in him already has been condemned. Now this is perfect, passive. Perfect meaning it's happened in the past and continues into the future. And ide, or ed rather, marks something that's already been done. Already, in fact, something like that. Now, the one who does not believe is condemned already. Why? Because. The one who does not believe has not believed in the name of the only son of God. We've got a series of genitives here, starting with the name, the name of the only son. And this is the only son of God. Monogenus here, this is um, masculine singular genitive. It's from monogenos. Monos meaning only. Genos basically meaning generation, only begotten. And here you see only begotten son of God. This is a roundabout way uh, to take the Lord's name seriously, uh, as is typical in Hebrew fashion and style, uh, they don't want to take the Lord's name in vain. And so often, though not always, uh, they'll make reference to the name, Hashem, the name in Hebrew. And so this is really pointing back to Esau's tone up here, in him, in the name of the only Son of God. So this is how the sentence breaks down. And you can see the wonderful parallelism here. The one who believes in him is not judged, but 
In contrast, the one who does not believe in him, well, they've already been judged and continue to be judged. Why? Because they have not believed, and this is perfect tense as well, so they have not believed and they've not continued to believe. That's the meaning of the perfect. It's something that happened in the past and continues into the future. But in this, in this case, it's negated. They've not believed and continued to believe in the name of the only Son of God. Now, normally, U is the negative marker for indicative. As we see here, this is an indicative verb. This is an, an indicative verb. Well, so is this one. Why do we have me here? Me is the negative of will, wish, or doubt. If U denies the fact, me denies the idea. Now, in Kini Greek, which is the Greek of the New Testament, this usage is simplified to such a degree that U is generally the negative used with the indicative, and me is used with other moods, but it's not, it's not exclusive. So this is marking here as the exception to that rule, it's denying the idea of the name. It's a negative clause, but it's not conditional. There's no aeon. It's not purpose. There's no ina. It's not oste. It's not an, an interrogative clause. So it's not a question. In a few relative clauses, well, this is close, but not quite. In a causal clause, contrary to the rule, which calls for oo. So causal clause, contrary to the rule. And we see here our example, John 3.18. So it's really predicated on OT. So let's look at that. OT is a conjunction. It's originally the neuter of ostis. It's a marker of narrative or discourse content, direct or indirect. Marker of explanatory clauses, translated as that. Marker of introducing direct discourse. Marker of causality. And here's our 318. So it's subordinating because, since. So it's explaining the cause. Kakrite. They're condemned already because marker of causality and then we see me combined with ot here now it, me basically bears the nuance of oo and it's used with the indicative so that's what's going on there generally speaking oo is for the indicative me is for the other non-indicative moods but as with many languages the rules can be broken they don't always follow the rules. And we have an, a good example of that here with me. And so we have the one who believes in him is not condemned. But the one who does not believe has been condemned already and continues to be. Because he has not believed and has not continued to believe in the name of of the only Son of God. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button, check out the Greek and Hebrew lectures, brush up on your biblical languages, and we'll see you next time.